Hi! My name is Dr. Edelita Rimigoso Hamis here once again for my Sunday drive. So today I'm going to talk about obesity. I can tell you that this topic of obesity is completely relatable to me. And so first I'm going to tell you why. In 2017, my husband was 40 pounds heavier. I was 17 pounds heavier and both of us were diabetics and both of us are doctors here in the United States because we just sat most of the time in the clinic. We blame our weight gain from sedentary lifestyle. We're just not moving too much. Convinced that this, it's the, it's the no exercise that made us obese and diabetic. We embarked on that 45 minute to an hour daily exercise, moderate intensity exercise every day. We did that. How did we do it? Oh, try to find our way around our lifestyle back then. We used to wake up at 5.30 in the morning, so we're ready for the clinic at 7.30. But when we decided to exercise every day, we had to wake up an hour earlier. So that's 4.30 in the morning. And we hopped on our treadmill and, um, you know, uh, uh, elliptical. So we did that for three months. And then we rechecked our numbers and it didn't get us anywhere. No. Maybe like a week we lose, uh, we, we lost a pound or two and then the next week we gain it back. But at the end of the three months, we ended up actually weighing more than when we started. We realized, unfortunately, unfortunately, we were wrong in our conviction that we just lack exercise. That's why we were obese. Exercising an hour a day, moderate intensity, we thought was better than not doing anything at all. And it should make our our, our weights go down, but it didn't. We did not get the best outcome we had hoped for. So let me ask you then, have you ever have that feeling or had that feeling? No matter what you do, how much you try, you seem to can't get away from the same problem. The next thing you know, you're back to square one. You back to where you started. Have you had that feeling? Isn't that frustrating and exhausting? That's what I felt then. I was hoping to weigh less and less every time I stepped on my weighing scale. I was just disappointed. That's when I started looking at seriously in this equation. I knew about this equation. This is not a mathematical equation. It's a simple equation, but I never paid attention to it until I felt that great frustration in my weight, that I could not get my weight off or down consistently. I want you to listen very carefully. For those of you who wanted me to talk about this, obesity, please listen carefully. This is the equation. Energy acquired minus energy expend equals weight status. There are only two factors in the equation, energy acquired and energy expend. There are only two factors. These are the only two factors you can change in order to get your desired weight. The energy you get, energy acquired is the energy you get from food, period. And the energy expend, the chur, is your physical activity, period. Now, if you want to maintain your weight, Whatever you weight, whatever weight you are on right now, if you want to maintain that, it's simple. You just need to balance the equation. You just need to equalize your calorie in and your calorie out. But when you want to lose weight, you can only do either two things, two things only. One is decrease the calories from by regulating your food intake because that's how you get energy. And number two is to increase your energy spending through exercise or regular physical activity. 
what I did first was increase my energy expenditure, my energy out, my calorie out through exercise. But I was still eating the same foods and even more volume because I got hungrier after exercise, which probably many of you can relate to. Exercise without changing diet and lifestyle does not make you healthy. You may drop some weight here and there, but only for a short time. And once you stop exercising, you will gain back the weight. If you are fat or you're already overweight to start with, exercise alone may not be able to reverse your diabetes, atherosclerosis, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and other chronic diseases. And that explained why my blood sugar was still high after three months of intense exercise. So I already tried exercising, hoping to increase my energy expenditure, meaning more calories out, but my weight did not budge. That's when I started looking at my calories in. What am I eating? It is well documented that lifestyle change, such as improving your diet, can fight the adverse effects of metabolic syndrome. The best weight loss strategy is a lifestyle change that particularly pays attention to a diet that is predominantly a whole food plant-based diet. Any food that you put in your mouth can have a significant impact on your health. A whole food plant-based diet is not equal, not the same as a vegetarian diet, as a vegan diet. If you want to know more about this, I have a separate video on this. I talk about this. Bottom line, the body cannot store extra fat if you don't eat foods rich in fat, cholesterol, excess sugar. No amount of exercise, you guys, can rebalance this equation if you're eating these kinds of foods. Why? Fats are high caloric foods. Foods per gram of fat you eat gives you nine calories. Carbohydrates give you what? Four calories only. Fats are high caloric foods. Cholesterol, which are high in meat and animal products, are like fats too. Excess sugar when you don't use them, can be stored as fats. Here's what's interesting, practical. Just two slices of pepperoni pizza, two slices. It's about 560 calories already. It depends on what else are on that pizza, but on average, 560 calories, two slices of pepperoni pizza. To burn that, to burn that, calories, those calories, you have to do moderate intensity exercise like bicycling for what? 65 minutes. Here's another one. Tortilla chips. 28 pieces of tortilla chips gives you the same amount of calories, 560 calories. And if you don't want to do a moderate intensity bicycling for 65 minutes, you can do 57 minutes of Zumba to burn those calories. Who does that? Who likes to exercise after having a nice piece of pizza? How about a can of Coke? Can of Coke is about 140 calories. If you decide to walk it out, go ahead, but do so at four miles per hour for 23 minutes. Let's be honest. Just, just be honest. What do you do after you eat? You're getting too many calories. From that small amount of beverage, from that small amount of food, which is impossible to burn with our lifestyle today. Yet after two hours, you get hungry again, eat another high caloric food, packing more and more weight. Now, Compare that, compare that to a low caloric foods, vegetables, fruits, whole grains. Even if you eat a lot, 
those the calories remain low, and you feel full for the next four to six hours. You don't even like to snack anymore. And do you know that a human body can efficiently and effectively burn more calories faster from plant sources than animal foods? Even, even without exercise, many people think that lifestyle change is just about moving, moving their bodies. They get excited. They buy a new pair of sneakers, you know, a new pair of gym clothes, and and get a gym membership and, and set expectations. Don't get me wrong; those are really good. Those are not bad at all. I think that it's a good way to kickstart a healthy lifestyle. Even though exercise increases, you know, your, your uh, benefits for other health benefits, positive health benefits, mental health, you know, for example, that is not enough to burn exist pre-existing fats, excess weight. Our topic today, don't get astray, is about obesity. So I'm very frank, and I'm really going to be very straight with my point. Exercise has positive health benefits, but that's not enough if you want to lose weight. If you talk about sustainable weight loss, research shows that the effectiveness of exercise and dietary change may not be equal. They are not equal. You can exercise for an hour a day. Yes, I don't doubt that you can do that. But what matters is what you do for the next twenty-three hours of that day. Just to simplify that, can I ask you a question? <laughs> How many times does an average person exercise a day? Once, right? Maybe twice. How many times does an average person eat a day? Eats a day. I mean,、uh, more than once. I can guarantee you. <laughs> We gain weight because we take in more than we need. It's not just because we are lazy; we're not moving our bodies. We are just taking in so much calories. No, there's not a body, a human body, that can store what it does not have in excess. It makes so much so much sense then to put greater importance. On what we are putting in our mouths, then the Snickers that you put in your feet, beating yourself up with、um, intense physical activity without giving the body the right fuel, the right food, can barely scratch the surface of your health goals. What you put into your body is what's going to show outwardly. Remember, the body cannot store what it does not have in excessive amounts. Recent research result also showed that the diet has significant advantages over exercise as a weight loss tool. Evidence shows that weight loss from exercise tends to be lower than expected. We set very high expectation. You, you you embarked on an exercise routine. Please remember that the real outcome is just lower than your expectation. And the problem is that not because you set too high expectation. The prob expectations. The problem is that you use the wrong tool, right? And I prove that to be true in my own journey, in our journey with my husband. This just shows that diet trumps exercise in terms of weight loss, and the best dietary strategy to lose and maintain healthy weight is to lean on plants. Three words: lean on plants. Eat a predominantly whole food, plant-based diet. That's my message to you guys. I hope that you took that by heart. Ponder on those. Thoughts, that idea. Ultimately, you'll be the one who can decide and take action. Make a lifestyle change. Don't care how small it is. Just be consistent. 
so you can reach your goal. Love you. See you next.